everybody. My name is Liz Magnanti and I'm from the Birdhouse in Rochester, New York. And today we're talking about attracting my personal favorite backyard bird, the Oriole, to your yard. And here in upstate New York, we do have two different species of Orioles. The Baltimore Oriole is going to be the most common that you will find. And the male has that really bright orange color coloration. And then the female is more of a yellowish color. And as the female matures, she actually becomes more and more orange over time. So sometimes they do look a little bit more orange than the picture of the female here. But that male is always that striking orange color. And I find that I usually hear them before I see them. And they have this really beautiful, um, clear pitched song that sounds like this. So the song can vary a bit, but it's always the really clear high pitch whistle and they tend to perch high up in the trees and sing and sing and sing, especially if you have any kind of flowering tree in the spring. It's a great place to look for Orioles. Listen for that song and then look for that bright orange coloration of the male. And Orioles are what are called neotropical migrants. So they spend the winter in Mexico, South America, Central America, and that's where they'll spend the winter. So that's their non-breeding range. And then they will migrate up into the continental U.S. Uh, Baltimore Orioles will, will migrate up into Canada. And that's their breeding range. So that is where they will find a mate. And that's where they will nest and raise their young, only to go back down to their non-breeding range again in the fall. So we do have a second species of Oriole, which aren't as common as the Baltimore Oriole. But this is the Orchard Oriole. And the male especially looks very different than the male Baltimore Oriole. So he's more of a chestnut color, very, very dark in coloration. So um, they're not as common, especially in yards as the Baltimore Orioles are, but people do get them coming to their feeders. So keep an eye out for the Orchard Oriole. And this is the immature Orchard Oriole. He has a very black mask on his face, so he's very, very distinctive. And um, the Orchard Oriole has a very similar range to that of the Baltimore Oriole. They just don't go as far north up into Canada. So keep an eye out for the Orchard Oriole, especially around the lake shore. They can be, fine. They can be found. So Orioles, uh, they spend a lot of their time in deciduous trees. That's where they nest. And they're considered an edge habitat species. So they don't like deep forests, but they like that transitional habitat between woods and another type of habitat, whether it be a field or a backyard. They are a very common backyard bird. And they'll forage for insects and fruits in shrubs and in bushes. And so keep an eye out if you do have any kind of flowering trees. They're like magnets for Orioles, especially as they're migrating in and they'll drink the nectar out of those blooms from the, uh, from the blooming trees. In the spring and in the fall, uh, nectar and fruits are most of the Orioles diet. And then in the summer when there's a lot of insects out and when they're raising their young, they'll switch their diet to a lot of insects. And that's pretty common with most birds. When it comes to nesting, the Orioles will build a pretty interesting nest. And you can see what the nest looks like here. The female will choose the nest site and that's within the territory of the male, whoever she picks as her mate. And she weaves together this really ornate nest. And now uh, we're in early April here. Now is a great time if you're out and about taking a walk. You can see these nests hanging from the trees from last year. There's no leaves on the trees yet. So now's a great time to take a look and see if you can find some of these Oriole nests hanging from the trees. Um, the female will start weaving together this nest that will hang from a branch, usually a branch that's kind of sticking out from the tree. And um, it can be about three or four inches deep. So it's a pretty large nest. And she'll weave that together and it takes her about a week to do that. And every year the Orioles will have one brood and the clutch size will be anywhere from three to seven eggs. And usually with songbirds, the older and more mature the bird is, the more eggs they will have. And the incubation period, so the amount of time the female is sitting there on the nest is 11 to 14 days. So it takes 11 to 14 days for those eggs to hatch. And once they hatch, 
it only takes another 11 to 14 days for those birds to actually fledge for them to leave the nest. So it doesn't take much time at all. And it's during that nesting period that she's feeding them a lot of insects. So if you are having Orioles in your yard for a while, they're eating a lot of nectar and a lot of jelly, and then all of a sudden they disappear, we find that a lot. And that's usually because they're, they're collecting a lot of insects. So one thing you can do, and we'll get into this a little bit later, is switch your food from the nectar, the jelly, to mealworms. And then here's an orchard oriole nest. It's pretty similar. It looks like a little bag that's hanging from a tree. So just not as deep as the Baltimore oriole nest, but very similar looking. So orioles do come to feeders. They're not going to come to your regular seed feeders you might have out in your yard, but they are common feeder birds. And they're actually pretty easy to, tr to attract. People have had more luck recently attracting orioles than they have with attracting hummingbirds, which um, has been surprising the last few years. They've been quite easy to attract. And there's a few different ways you can do it. You can do it with suet, oranges, nectar, jelly, and mealworms. So there's several different food choices that you have. And here's some Orioles perched on some of their favorite foods here. And one of the easiest things you can do, especially if you already have the feeder, is put out an orange flavored suet, especially early in the season if you haven't seen any Orioles yet, and you just want to put it out there and see if you have any around. Um, orange suet is a great way to go because not only will Orioles eat it, but your other birds will as well. So your woodpeckers will eat it, nuthatches, they'll all eat the, the orange suet. They're not very picky, but it will help bring in the Orioles. And then oranges. Oranges are another really simple way to attract Orioles. And this is another thing people do usually early in the season before they get all their nectar made and they put out a bunch of jelly. They'll just put out a few oranges to see if if and when the Orioles are coming back. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, if you have a tray feeder, you can throw some oranges in there. Um, here we've got some oranges just sitting on a spike. There's a lot of different feeders that will give those birds the oranges that they want. And nectar. So nectar is another thing that the Orioles will drink. They'll drink the nectar from blooming flowers. Um, but you can also make your own Oriole nectar. And you can do that a few different ways. There's mixes that you just add water to, and that those are really easy to prepare. There are liquid nectars that are all ready to use. You can just pour into your feeder, or you can make your own using sugar and water. So white granulated sugar, you take one part sugar to five parts water, you just boil the water, add the sugar, mix it in there, let it cool, and you've got yourself some Oriole nectar. You wanna stay away from dyes. It's not known if dyes can harm birds in any way, and they don't need the dye in their nectar at all. If you've got an orange feeder, that does help to bring them in, but you don't want to dye your nectar. And then jelly. So jelly is the best thing that you can put out to attract Orioles. Um, some, sometimes we hear that people have Orioles that prefer oranges or they prefer the nectar, but nine times out of 10, the thing that they prefer is going to be jelly. So you cannot go wrong with jelly. They love grape jelly. There's some jelly available called birdberry jelly, which is a mix of grape and blackberry, and they just go crazy for it. And I love that it's in a little squeezy jar, so you can just squeeze it right into the feeder that you have, and they go bonkers for it. And then there's mealworms. So as the season progresses and there's more and more insects out, and as their, the Orioles eggs hatch, those little nestlings depend on a lot of insect protein in order to grow and grow fast. That nestling period's only, like we saw, 11 to 14 days. So it doesn't take very long for that little naked blind bird to grow up and leave the nest. And that's, they're able to do that because they eat a lot of insect protein. So a common thing we hear is you have Orioles in the spring, you've got them all May, all June, and it's delightful. And then all of a sudden they start to disappear. And what it seems is while well, they are nesting, they're switching their diet to a lot of insects. So you can take whatever Oriole feeder you have that had that little cup for the jelly, and you can put mealworms in there instead. And just like bluebirds, uh, who also love the mealworms, there's different options. You can feed them live mealworms, which they prefer, or you can always feed them freeze-dried mealworms. 
So that's another option. So, um, and then another thing is if you do have your, your feeders out and the Orioles have disappeared, still keep them out. Even if you just have a couple oranges out or a little cup of jelly, because once those nestlings do fledge, they tend to bring them back to the feeders. So don't be surprised if later on in the season, later on in June, all of a sudden you get your, your Orioles back and they have a couple new little children that they're showing where the feeders are. And the adults will sometimes grab a beak full of jelly and feed it to the little nestlings. So it's a really, really cute experience. There's a lot of different types of Oriole feeders you can get. And these are two of our most popular. Um, the one on the left is called the Ultimate Oriole Feeder. And the one on the right is our best bestseller. It's called the Oriole Fest. And they both offer all the Orioles' favorite foods. So you can put nectar inside of the feeder. On the top, there's little cups for jelly. And then you can spear an orange right on the top of the feeder. So it's a really popular way to attract Orioles. You can give them all three of their favorite foods. But most Oriole feeders will have some kind of combination of foods. And I personally would suggest absolutely something with jelly. And if you're picking in a feeder that has two different types of food, I would go with jelly and oranges. That's really what they love. Um, the nectar can go bad after a couple of days. So if it's hard for you to keep it fresh, stick with the, the, the jelly and the oranges. And here's just a couple more feeders that, that offer them the jelly and oranges. Many different things you can put out. The birds aren't very picky, so just giving them some kind of combination is always good. And then there's feeder accessories. So there's different things you can add to your feeder, and one that I highly recommend is a weather guard. So if you've ever had an Oriole feeder out, especially one with jelly, you might find that after it rains, it can wash that jelly away. So putting out just a little weather guard on top of the feeder, that'll help preserve the jelly so you don't have to go out there and refill it too often. And then some of the feeders have these built-in weather guards, like this one has a little dome on the top, and that is to cover the jelly so it doesn't wash away. And then this is a very important accessory. This is called an ant moat. And what this is, it's just a little hanging cup, and you fill it with water. And what that does is that as ants try to crawl down to get to the feeder, they get to this moat of water, and they can't cross that to get down to the feeder to get the jelly or get the the nectar. And if you do have a feeder with nectar in it, you can add what's called nectar defender. And what this is, is just some natural micronutrients. You add that to your feeder and it just keeps the nectar fresh longer. So normally um, nectar you want to change every two or three days just so it doesn't get moldy. If you add a little bit of this nectar defender to your feeder, it keeps your nectar fresh for more like a week or 10 days. So this is great too if you're going away on vacation and you don't want your nectar to go bad, you can add just a little bit of this and it'll keep your nectar fresh longer. Another way to keep out ants is going to be with this natural ant repellent called Nectar Fortress. It's made with cinnamon and cinnamon oil. And there's something about the cinnamon oil that the ants really don't like. So it comes in a little squeezy tube and you just put a line around your pole or around your feeder and it just keeps the ants away. It's all natural. It doesn't affect the birds in any way and it'll just keep your ants from crawling up the pole or crawling down to your feeder. And then there's bee guards and the Oriole Fest feeder comes with them or you can buy them separately if you have that feeder specifically. These are little rubber tips. You might have seen them in a hummingbird feeder that you have as well. They go on the inside little feeding ports of the feeder and that just makes it so the bees can't get inside so the orioles will poke their beak right through and they can get to the feeder fine but the bees can't penetrate that to get inside if you put out an oriole feeder you might find you're getting other visitors as well so don't be surprised um, these are the, our two most common that are coming to oriole feeders um, the first is called the gray catbird they love the oranges and the jelly they're um, related to mockingbirds. They're in that same family. They're in the mimic family. And they make a little sound that sounds like a, a, a cat meowing. And then this is the mockingbird, which will also come to Oriole feeders as well. So don't be surprised if you see these guys checking out your Oriole feeders this spring. So that's everything we have prepared for you today about Orioles. 
Um, there are some recommend recommendations that we have. The first is get your feeder out early. So here in upstate New York, you wanna make sure it's out by the third week of April or so. Um, just because as the Orioles are coming into the area and they find a food source, they tend to keep coming back to it. So keep your feeder out early to keep your Orioles coming all season long. And then stock up on jelly. It's not uncommon to have jelly completely wiped out um, of a store um, in the springtime because there are so many Orioles around. So it can't hurt to stock up on jelly. Um, if you want birdberry jelly, we have plenty of it over at the birdhouse. You can buy it. Just give us a call or visit us online and uh, we'd be happy to get you your jelly. And then definitely add a weather guard. You'll, you'll thank yourself after. Um, it'll just save you frustration and you won't have to refill your feeder too often. And make sure to switch to mealworms. If you want to keep your Orioles coming consistently, switching to mealworms can absolutely help. So I want to thank you guys for watching. And please visit our website at thebirdhouseny.com. Visit our Facebook page. We've been doing Facebook Live presentations and we'll continue to do so. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments below or send us an email or visit us on our Facebook page and let us know. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.